In August of 1982, Mexico stunned the financial world by announcing that it would not be able to pay back its debt on time. Other countries such as Jamaica, Peru, Poland, and Turkey had also had debt trouble, but none had the potential impact of Mexico. Mexico was the most important domino, and after its announcement, dozens of other countries followed suit. The fact that so many countries were unable to pay their debt at the time indicates that there were external factors at play. We're going to discuss those in this video. On the other hand, some countries had a lot harder time than others, suggesting that domestic factors were important as well, and we'll discuss those reasons in a different video. Mexico's announcement posed a large threat to the financial system. As Keynes famously said, if you owe your bank $100, you are in trouble. If you owe your bank $1 million, however, then your bank is in trouble. Instead of $1 million, it was more like hundreds of billions, much more than the total capital of the world's biggest banks. Mexico, Brazil, and Argentina together were around $200 billion in debt. The problem was so big that it was, became called the MBA problem. 1982 represented a reversal of capital flows from the Latin American region. From 1974 to 81, the region had received a net resource transfer of $91 billion. Between 1982 and 1990, however, it made a staggering net resource transfer abroad of almost $224 billion. To put this into perspective, the debt service of Latin American countries averaged about 4.2% of their GDP from 1982 to 1985. That was about twice, almost twice as much as what Germany had to pay in reparations after World War I. They paid about 2.5% of their GDP, which was a factor often pointed to in the rise of Hitler. As we will see, this kind of debt servicing led to dramatic declines in consumption and imports. Before there can be a debt crisis, there obviously needs to be an accumulation of debt. And before the 1960s and especially the 70s, there was not much international lending to Latin America. Most countries in the region had defaulted on their debt in the 1930s, and international banks were not anxious to return. There were three changes that really fueled the expansion of debt during these decades. First, there was rising oil prices in the 1970s, which led Middle Eastern countries to deposit the new revenue in European banks. This led to a dramatic expansion of the euro-dollar market, where euro-dollar means dollars that are borrowed and invested outside of the United States. Second, most of the rich countries were suffering from high inflation, which meant that real interest rates were low or even negative. Remember that the real interest rate is just the nominal or stated rate minus the inflation rate. So bankers were looking for more profitable areas to invest their money. The innovation of loan syndication allowed banks to spread lending risks across many other financial institutions, sometimes up to 500 banks. This made bankers less worried about risking their money in countries like Mexico. And third, banks began making floating rate loans, where the interest rate on the loan would depend on market conditions in rich countries. So if rich country interest rates started to rise, so would the debt burden in these countries. And the floating rate loans reduced the risk that banks would have to pay depositors higher rates than they were receiving on their loan portfolio. Citicorp's chairman Walter Risson famously and incorrectly stated that countries never go bankrupt. Unfortunately, most large banks seem to follow that advice, lending out more than 100% of their capital to just a few countries. For instance, the profits that Citicorp made on its loans to Brazil totaled 13% of the bank's total profits in 1976. Bank lending in general went from about 10% of Latin America's public external debt in 1966 to 26% in 1972. And by the end of 1982, the ratio of Latin American loans to equity was in excess of 100% for 16 of the 18 leading international banks in Canada and the United States. And if that weren't enough, there were more red flags on the horizon. As strange as it may sound, banks actually had very little idea of the purpose of much of the loans they made. Almost 60% of the loans made by U.S. banks in the 1970s were categorized as general purpose, purpose unknown, or refinancing. So what changed to turn this debt accumulation into a debt crisis? Well, first, rich countries got serious about bringing down inflation in the late 1970s by raising interest rates. This caused three big problems in Latin America. First, 65% of government debt in the region had floating interest rates, meaning that their interest rates were tied to rich country rates. So as the latter increased, so did the Latin American debt burden. Second, investing in rich country markets was now more attractive. One of the reasons that banks had invested so much money in Latin America in the 1970s is that real interest rates were very low in rich countries. Now that these rich countries offered attractive returns, investors started to funnel more money in that direction. And third, the increased interest rates in the U.S. made the dollar more valuable, 
Most Latin American debt was denominated in dollars, meaning that it had to be paid back in dollars. Now that the dollar was more valuable relative to Latin American currencies, paying each dollar of debt required more domestic currency by the debtor country. As I mentioned in the previous slide, the debt needed to be paid back in U.S. dollars. One of the only ways countries could accumulate the dollars necessary to service their debt was to export. Unfortunately, in the 70s and early 80s, many wealthy economies were mired in recession and were demanding less of Latin America's key commodity exports. This made it harder for these countries to raise the necessary dollars. This figure gives real non-energy commodity prices from 1973 to 1982. So you can see prices peaked around 1974 and then fell pretty steadily to 1982. Two of the best sources that I've found on the debt crisis is Jeffrey Sachs' paper in 1985 and the Brookings Papers on Economic Activity called Inter External Debt and Macroeconomic Performance in Latin America and East Asia and Daryl Delamade's book, 1985 as well, called Debt Shock, The Full Story of the World Credit Crisis.